Where did humans come from? It sounds like a simple question, one that should have a quick answer. But once we look deeper, things get far more complex. Humans didn't just appear out of nowhere. We are the result of millions of years of change, of trial and error, adaptation and extinction. Modern science tells us that Homo sapiens, in other words, us, are just one branch on a much larger evolutionary tree. And for a long time, we weren't the only humans on this planet. We had relatives, Neanderthals, Denisovans, and the Flores people, among others. Some were stronger than us, some were better adapted to the cold. But in the end, only we remained. Why? What made Homo sapiens different? Intelligence, language, the ability to think in symbols? Maybe, but the answer isn't that simple. To find it, we need to look back, way back, to a time when the idea of humans was just beginning to take shape. In this video, we'll trace the journey from the first upright walking creatures to modern humans. We'll explore who we lived alongside and try to understand why we were the ones who survived, the ancestors of humankind. The story of humanity begins long before Homo sapiens ever appeared. Its roots go deep into the distant past, to a time when our ancestors were not yet human in the way we understand it today. Millions of years ago, Africa was home to creatures that only partially resembled us. They looked more like apes, but over time, something began to change. Some of these early primates started showing signs of upright walking. One major turning point came when part of this population climbed down from the trees and began spending more time on the ground. That shift set them on a new path, the path that would eventually lead to the first hominins, the evolutionary line that gave rise to humans. One of the most famous early members of this group was Australopithecus, a being that lived around three to four million years ago. It didn't have a large brain or use complex tools, but it walked on two legs, and that was revolutionary. Walking upright freed the hands, allowed for better vision across the landscape, helped regulate body temperature, and made long distance travel easier. It was the beginning of a new era, but the real breakthrough came a bit later. Around 2.5 million years ago, a new kind of human appeared, Homo habilis, or handy man. For the first time in history, a creature began intentionally crafting stone tools. Homo habilis had a larger brain than its predecessors, and it showed the first signs of a mind capable of something more than just instinct. This was a being that didn't just survive, it started to think. It could reason, plan, and make choices. And in that moment, something essential was set in motion. The long process of becoming the humans we are today. The early evolution of human species. The next major milestone in human history was the rise of Homo erectus, the upright human. This species appeared over 1.8 million years ago and remained on the evolutionary stage for a very long time. In fact, Homo erectus was one of the most successful early human species, surviving for hundreds of thousands of years and even overlapping in time with other human lineages. Homo erectus was the first to fully master upright walking, but that wasn't the only breakthrough. It was also the first human to leave Africa, spreading across Asia and Europe, becoming, in a sense, the first true global traveler. So what made Homo erectus so successful? One big factor was its improved stone tools. This wasn't just a creature picking up rocks, it was crafting them. Hand axes, scrapers, cutting tools. All of them allowed Homo erectus to butcher animals, process hides, and gather resources more effectively. And perhaps even more importantly, this was the first species to control fire. Not just fear it like animals, but make it, maintain it, warm themselves, protect their camps, and cook their food. That was nothing short of a revolution. With these changes came early forms of social organization. Homo erectus didn't live alone. Archaeological evidence shows that they hunted in groups, shared food, and may have even cared for the injured or elderly. This wasn't a full human culture yet. 
but it was much more than pure instinct. And the story didn't stop there. Over time, new human species evolved from Homo erectus, each following its own path. One of them was Homo heidelbergensis, thought to be a direct ancestor of both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. Living about 600,000 years ago, this species showed signs of advanced thinking, building shelters from wood and bone, crafting more refined tools, and possibly communicating in complex ways. Another offshoot was Homo naledi, discovered in the caves of South Africa. It lived much later, but had a small primitive brain. And yet its behavior was unusual. It appears to have deliberately placed its dead deep in caves, suggesting some kind of ritual or symbolic thinking. Highly unexpected for such an early human. And then there were the so-called hobbits, Homo floresiensis, found on the Indonesian island of Flores. These humans stood barely three feet tall with small brains, but they managed to survive independently in isolation, adapting to their environment in remarkable ways. For years, scientists thought their existence was impossible, but now they've forced us to rethink where the line between us and them truly lies. All of these branches existed at the same time in different corners of the world. At that stage, humanity wasn't just one species. It was a network of different human types, each trying to survive in a wild and unpredictable world. Neanderthals and Denisovans. While Homo sapiens was just beginning to emerge in Africa, other types of humans were already living in different parts of the world. The most well-known among them were the Neanderthals, who inhabited Europe and parts of Western Asia. Neanderthals weren't the wild cave people that pop culture once made them out to be. In fact, their brains were larger on average than those of modern humans. They were well adapted to cold climates, skilled tool makers, effective hunters of large animals, and creators of clothing. Many researchers also believe they had a basic form of language, but perhaps even more telling is how they cared for each other. Archaeological evidence shows that Neanderthals helped the injured and the elderly, buried their dead, and even decorated bodies with pigments or ornaments. These behaviors point to early forms of culture and maybe even beliefs about life and death. At the same time, farther east in Asia, there were other humans, the Denisovans. We know much less about them because their remains are extremely rare, just a few teeth, finger bones, and fragments of skulls. Still, those small pieces revealed something big. Genetic analysis confirmed that Denisovans were a distinct branch of humanity who lived at the same time as both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, and interbred with us too. Both species, Neanderthals and Denisovans, were successful in their own environments. They survived for thousands of years in tough conditions and spread across vast regions. But around 40,000 years ago, they vanished. Why? We still don't know for sure, but scientists have some theories. A changing climate, competition from Homo sapiens, who may have had more advanced language, better social organization, and newer tools, or possibly direct conflict and displacement from key resources. But disappearance isn't quite the end of the story. Both Neanderthals and Denisovans left a trace in our DNA. Genetic studies show that nearly everyone with non-African ancestry carries two to 4% Neanderthal DNA. And some modern populations in South and Southeast Asia also carry up to five to 6% Denisovan DNA. In other words, we didn't just replace them, we absorbed part of them. The history of humanity isn't the story of a single species. It's a story of mixing, competition, adaptation, and survival. We are descendants not only of Homo sapiens, but of others who also once called themselves human. The rise of Homo sapiens. Modern humans, Homo sapiens, first appeared in Africa around 300,000 years ago. Fossils from Morocco, Ethiopia, and Kenya show that our species was already taking shape back then. These early humans didn't look exactly like us today, but they had the same brain size the same body proportions, and most likely a similar way of thinking. 
So what made them different from other humans? The key advantages were abstract thinking, language, and symbolic behavior. Early Homo sapiens began creating jewelry, cave art, and advanced tools made from stone, bone, and wood. These weren't just practical items. They were signs of culture. They point to a growing sense of community, awareness of the world, and maybe even a belief in life after death. Language likely became their greatest strength. It allowed them to share knowledge, coordinate plans, form larger, more complex social groups, and assign roles. Where Neanderthals might have acted through instinct or experience, Homo sapiens could discuss and strategize. Around 70,000 to 60,000 years ago, our ancestors began to leave Africa and spread across the globe. They moved into the Middle East, Europe, Central Asia, and India, eventually reaching Siberia, Southeast Asia, Australia, and much later, the Americas. On their journey, they encountered other humans, Neanderthals, Denisovans, and maybe even species we haven't discovered yet. Sometimes these encounters led to conflict, other times to interbreeding. These interactions didn't always last long, but they left a mark. As a result, some Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA made its way into the Homo sapiens gene pool before those other species disappeared forever. In the end, Homo sapiens became the only surviving human species. But we are not a pure product of evolution. We are a mosaic shaped by the contributions, failures, and legacies of all those who once walked this earth alongside us, what remains of our ancient relatives. Even though Neanderthals and Denisovans disappeared thousands of years ago, they didn't vanish completely. A part of them still lives on, in us. In 2010, scientists fully sequenced the Neanderthal genome. What they discovered was groundbreaking. Every modern human with non-African ancestry carries between 1% and 4% Neanderthal DNA. That means Homo sapiens and Neanderthals didn't just coexist. They interbred multiple times in different regions across Eurasia. The case of the Denisovans is even more surprising. Their DNA is found mostly in people from Asia, Australia, and Oceania. For example, some populations in Melanesia and Papua New Guinea carry as much as 5 to 6% Denisovan DNA. Why does this matter? Because those genes aren't just leftovers from the past, they still affect us today. Some parts of Neanderthal DNA are linked to our immune system, especially how we respond to viruses. Others influence traits like skin tone, hair texture, or even susceptibility to certain diseases. Denisovan genes may have helped ancient humans adapt to high altitudes, like in the mountains of Tibet. These traces are like fingerprints in our genetic passport. They remind us that we are not some isolated species created in a vacuum. We are the result of a complex history shaped by many branches of the human family tree, all woven together over time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Stay with us and hit that subscribe button. It really keeps us going. There's a lot more exciting content coming soon. See you next time.